Cool. So with this question, we're dealing with uh, a tax example and the basic supply and demand framework that we've done in uh, previous chapters. It's taken from Krugman Wells, Microeconomics, Second Edition, Chapter Seven, Question Three, uh, and it sets up uh, in 1990. The United States began to levy a tax on the sales of luxury cars. For simplicity, assume that the tax was an excise tax of six thousand dollars per car. Uh, the accompanying figure shows. Uh, hy hypothetical demand and supply curves for luxury cars. So that's this over here. Um, so in terms of hypothetical uh, supply and demand, you have the demand curve here in blue, uh, and it reveals that at very high prices there's a relatively low demand. So at like 55 bucks, there's only 20,000 cars. Uh, $55,000 per car, only 20,000 cars are demanded. We're at a relatively lower price of about, I think that looks like $49. Um, there is a quantity demanded of 140,000 uh, in the market. So at low prices, there's more demand. And then similarly, you've got the supply curve in red. Um, as the cost of a car increases, you know, for every given price, uh, if the price of a car is higher, suppliers are willing to supply a larger quantity. So, you know, at a low price down here, I guess that's at 47,500, uh, suppliers are only willing to produce 20,000 cars. We're at a much higher price, at about uh, 50,500, then suppliers are willing to supply or produce 140,000 cars. Okay, so uh, the question asks, under the tax, um, what is the price paid by consumers, what is the price received by producers, and what is the tax revenue um, from the excise tax? So in this case, the excise tax is $6,000 per car. So for each individual car, let's say uh, we're located over here, let's say cars are selling for um, $47,000 right at the start, uh, with an excise tax of 6000 that's going to push up the price by um, $6,000. Um, so let's put in the new supply curve. So we're going to start from 47 here. So starting from 47, we're going to add 6. So 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. Oops. Let me add the line. Okay, so 53. Um, and before this point right here was 48, and it's going up 6, so it's going up to 45. So the new curve is going to be something like this. So this line here is exactly as a line such that each of these points are exactly 6,000 above the supply curve down here. We're just shifting up the supply curve by 6,000. Um, and then this being an excise tax, and I shifted up the supply curve, um, you notice why didn't I just shift down or inward the uh, demand curve? Uh, well, you'll get the same result. Um, but you know you kind of choose one or the other, either shifting the supply curve or shifting the demand curve. Um, the, if the question sets it up such that the tax is a tax on consumers, where consumers are somehow paying it, then you would uh, tend to shift the, the demand curve. Uh, if the question set up such that uh, the tax is somehow paid for by the suppliers, uh, you then shift up the supply curve. This doesn't really make clear either way, so I'm just shifting the curve that looks a little bit easier for me to shift uh, to get this new supply curve here. Great, so uh, what is the price paid by consumers? Um, well, first off, let's talk about what the equilibrium was beforehand. Um, before any tax is introduced, the equilibrium price is where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So the equilibrium price before a tax is uh, instigated is this $50,000 per luxury car, and the equilibrium quantity, both produced and sold, is 120000 Introducing the tax, we have a new equilibrium uh, price and quantity. It's where um, quantity is applied equals quantity demanded at our new point. So the new equilibrium uh, price is going to be where these two lines, the demand curve and our new shifted supply curve, intersect. So it's at, at $54,000 per luxury car. So that's going to be uh, the price paid by consumers. Next, what is the price received by producers? Well, they're selling the car for $54,000. However, the excise tax, remember, is $6,000. So uh, producers are going to receive that 
minus the excise tax, they're going to receive this 48,000. Uh, let me summarize them down here. So buyers pay 54,000. And then the producers receive the 54,000 minus the $6,000 excise tax, resulting in $48,000 paid to the producers. And then lastly, what is the government tax revenue from the excise tax? So tax revenue, uh, is just equal to the per car sales tax. The per car sales tax uh, is 6,000, that's the excise tax, times the number of cars sold in the market. So we have uh, equilibrium quantity of 40,000 and then the excise tax of 6,000. So we do 6,000 times 40,000 cars produced is equal to um, an is equal to 240 million dollars in tax revenue. So once again, it's the tax revenue is just the per car um, excise tax times how many cars are bought and sold in this market, and then this is our tax revenue. Uh, another way to think about it is you could put in the tax revenue area right here. So it's equivalent to 54 times the number of points, so 40,000. So this whole area right here is now tax revenue. This area, this triangle up here, is our new consumer surplus. And then this area down here, this triangle, is the uh, producer surplus. And then this whole area is the deadweight loss of this particular tax. Okay, so moving on. Um, question B. So over time, the tax on luxury automobiles was slowly phased out and completely eliminated in 2002. Suppose uh, for this question that the excise tax falls from $6,000 per car to $4,500 per car. Um, after the reduction in taxes from $6,000 to $4,500 per car, what is the price paid by consumers? And then what is the price received by producers? And then what's the tax revenue now? So we're just going to follow the same steps we did before, uh, but with this little curve. Um, let's see. So we have our supply curve over here, uh, and then now we're going to increase it by 4,500. So there's increasing by 1,000, increasing by 2,000, increasing by 3,000, increasing by 4,000, increasing by 4,500. So once again, I've just shifted up the supply curve 4,500 to add in this um, excise tax of 4,500. So what's the new equilibrium supply and demand? Uh, the new equilibrium where, like, where they where equilibrium um, supply and demand meet is at uh, this price. Well, the quantity is definitely forty thousand per car, but the price is looks about fifty three thousand. So buyers pay um, looks like fifty three thousand. Um, producers receive that 53,000 um, less the excise tax. So less the excise tax, they receive uh, this point right here, which is about 45,500. So producers receive, uh, they get paid this amount by the producer, but then they have to pay a bit of tax, so they receive in the end 48500 uh, And then what's the new tax revenue? Well, just like in Part A, we use the same same process. So we got a 4500 tax rate times the new uh, quantity sold. So the 4500 is how much tax is charged to each car. And then um, how many cars are produced in this market? There's 60,000. 
so that's going to equal a total tax revenue of $270 million. Uh, again, it's just the excise tax times the quantity of cars sold. That's the tax revenue here. Another way to think about it, you could add in a little uh, rectangle here to reflect the equilibrium, uh, sorry, not the equilibrium, to reflect the tax revenue. So it's this the change here, which is 4,500, times the quantity here, um, which is 60,000. So the next question, part C down here, asks, uh, compare the tax revenue created by taxes from, both, from parts A and B. What accounts for the change in taxes uh, from the reduction in ta excise tax? So when we had an excise tax of 6,000, we had a tax revenue of 240 million. Um, and then when we decreased the tax rate down to 4,500, we increased our tax revenue to 270 million. So we increased uh, taxes, like the total taxes collected by 30 million by decreasing the tax rate, which seems like a, kind of an odd observation. So um, the tax re revenue rose, and it rose with the reduction of the excise tax rate. So note that the, the, with the tax reduction, you know, going from 6,000 to 4,500, um, the number of cars produced uh, increased by 20,000. So although the per tax, per car tax revenue decreased by uh, 1,500, you know, now each car is um, getting a tax at a lower rate, um, because there was this additional 20,000 cars sold, the tax revenue actually increased. Uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff, look into the, the Laffer curve. Um, you know, it doesn't always work like this way, but uh, it's an interesting observation. Um, Cool. Uh, the last thing I want to do is not really a question, but I wanted to point out um, when we were dealing with the graph up here, you know, I had shifted the supply curve. Uh, for the second part, I had shifted it up 4,500, and for part A, I had shifted up uh, 6,000, the excise tax of 6,000. Um, and I had told you that I kind of arbitrarily chose to shift the supply curve inward, but I could have actually changed the demand curve, and I would have gotten the same result. I just kind of want to show you that, uh, demonstrate that right now. So I'm going to just bring over here on top of the demand curve a new line. Um, I'm going to make it look pretty close to where it was before. Sorry, I missed it. Okay, get nice and thick. Cool. So there's the new demand curve. Uh, remember that I'm going to do part A here. So we had a, a excise tax of 6,000. So I'm going to shift this down 6,000. So there's 1,000 shift down, 2,000 shift in, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's our new demand curve right here. This is the old demand curve, and here's the new demand curve where we shifted it inward by 6,000. So the new equilibrium, uh, where equilibrium supply and demand, uh, is located right here at 48,000, uh, and the equilibrium quantity of 40,000. So when we look at this, this is the amount that producers receive. Producers are going to receive that 48,000, which we had calculated here. OK, so what do uh, consumers actually pay? Um, well, consumers pay this 4,800 plus the 6,000 excise tax, which brings us up to the 45,000 per vehicle. Um, and then the same calculation works for tax revenue. You could have done the same thing for Part B. So I'm going to start over. I'm moving up the demand curve back to where it's before, and then I'm going to add the excise tax rate of uh, 4,500. So there's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, about 4,500 right there. So I've shifted down the demand curve by 4,500, and we have the new equilibrium price and quantity right here at uh, that looks like 48,500, and the equilibrium quantity of 60,000. So this is the price that producers receive. That's 48500 which we had got right here. Uh, and then what do producers actually pay? Sorry, what do you know buyers, consumers actually pay? They pay that 45 that's 48500 plus the tax revenue you know per car of 4800 equals the uh, 53000 that they pay for each car, uh, you know including the tax. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks. Hopefully this was helpful. Have a good day. Bye.